Sup guys, Ovidov here, and this is the first video in airdrop hunting series. And this time we're going to be doing steps for potential layer zero airdrop. Before we begin, there are several disclaimers that I need to make. The first one is nothing in this video is financial advice. Always do your own research. Second, and probably the most key here, the airdrop is not officially announced, obviously, and we're just trying to prepare in anticipation for the possible airdrop in the future. There may not be a token in layer zero, even though developers hinted it uh, some time ago. Even if there is a token, we don't know how it's going to be distrib distributed. Even if there is an airdrop, we don't know when the snapshot of the network and transactions gonna be. You may do the steps and then the snapshot was previously. And Finally, even if the snapshot is after you do the steps, again, there is no guarantee because you don't know what metrics they're going to use in order to decide who is eligible and who is not. Also, I would strongly recommend to not just do the steps for the purpose of potentially getting uh, some tokens, but explore the ecosystem of the chain uh, because this is how you learn new things. And you may potentially find some applications that uh, you like and you're going to be using in the future because of this research. And one more thing uh, before we begin, because it's sort of uh, common and general for all of the airdrops. Usually it's better to use a high amount of tokens, uh, more transactions uh, spread across longer period of time. Obviously, we don't know if that's going to have the effect on this particular case. But it's always better to transfer, for example, 100 USD than 10 cents. And it's always better to do 10 transactions than one transaction. And it's always better to spread them out in time uh, as much as possible, if you can, of course. Okay, we're done with the introductory part. Now let's go explore the apps. And we're going to start with the two testnet bridges. And then we're going to move to the application on the mainnet. All links obviously going to be in description. Okay, so the first one is testnetbridge.com. Not much functionality here. You can only bridge from main networks of Ethereum, ETH, Optimism, Arbitrum to Goalie testnet and vice versa. Also transactions here. I mean, my transaction took an hour and 20 minutes. But at that time, there was also a notification that Gurley uh, testnet um, is under maintenance. So I don't know, maybe that uh, had its effect. You can actually spend the tiny portion of real ETH here, probably from the chains with the low fees like Arbitrum or Optimism to get some Gurley ETH. Because the Gurley ETH uh, facet is only giving you 0.1 G ETH. And that's a really small amount that's like it will only allow you to do like one transaction if you want to do it uh, on the other bridge. So I think it's a good idea to like spend a tiny portion, get yourself like five, five, six uh, G ETH and to do transactions on the other bridge. This is this bridge. It's basically the USDC bridge where you can transfer USDC from uh, different test nets between different test nets. And if you try to do the transactions here, uh, for example, from like Gurley to Fuji, it cost me around 0.1 G ETH in gas. And yesterday it was even more congested. It was 50% uh, more than that even. So that's why I was actually suggesting get some G ETH here uh, to use to do more transactions on this test bridge later. Uh, they do link faucets for the USDC. This is the USDC faucet. We have the AVAX faucet. These are working fine. The main problem right now is with the girly faucet because A, you have to now register account on Alchemy. I mean, that's not a big deal, right? But you can only get 0.1 GETH in any 24 hour period. And it's not like daily. It's you do the transaction and then 24 hours has to pass for you to get another 0.1 GEs. So that's just like, I mean, if you do that in a period of time, you'll definitely have enough, but considering how much that costs to get the GEs like from the real ETH, I mean, you can spend like five bucks. I guess if, if you, if you airdrop hunting, you probably prepared to spend like 
50 to 100 bucks in like gas fees etc yeah so play with this bridge on the test net okay now moving on to the main net and the first application here is going to be stargate finance this is pretty much the regular dex where you can transfer and you can also provide liquidity to do that you need first to pull your assets and then add them into your farm there are a lot of chains supported here as you can see there's ethereum bnb Avalanche, Polygon, Arbitrum, Phantom, Optimism, and even Metis. You can also here find a decent bridge where you can transfer your stable coins. Uh, for example, if you need to transfer, let's say, USDT from AVAX to Arbitrum. For example, you transfer 100 uh, USDT and the commission would be 18 cents uh for for this transaction not covering gas obviously the gas would be calculated separately but if you need to transfer stable coins it's actually a good idea to do it here uh, considering that uh, more transactions uh, you do on the stargate the better in this case but also a good idea to provide liquidity at least in one of the pools okay moving on the next app would be rage trade it's a perp uh, it's actually built on arbitrum but powered by layer zero what is possible here you can either trade or you can deposit in vault and i would actually suggest depositing in vault the only problem with the vaults now if you check this one reached maximum capacity then you have here you have two vaults one risk on and one risk off the risk off is at full capacity 100 percent risk on is almost at full capacity 98 percent i haven't deposited myself so i'm gonna do it today a bit later so you can deposit as GLP, wrapped ETH or USDC. So here we just deposit and we can't really do a large number of transactions unless we trade and this is really up to you. And the last on bridge application here would be Radiant Capital, which is land and borrow protocol. And it's also built on Arbitrum and currently supports DAI, USDC, USDT, ETH and wrapped BTC. If you open a pool, you can see potential actions that you can do. For example, you can deposit there is also like a, I don't know what it's called, it's like a product that they call a looping uh, where they use leverage and I mean I can't really explain it because I don't get it myself, I'm not a big DEX guy. So in my case I'm just gonna simply deposit and not use this. And last but not least we got two bridges to Aptos, that's uh, the Aptos bridge and also the bridge on the liquid swap which is the main DEX of the uh, aptos network and for these transactions uh, you will need a separate aptos wallet because metamask and other mainstream wallets don't work uh, on aptos i recommend pontum wallet but you can use uh, any other with a dep connector and you will also need a small amount of aptos token to cover the gas fees also one important point here that transferring tokens through the bridge back from aptos to other networks take several days is is just due to the current structure of the system so just keep that in mind when you bridge into aptos and that concludes the list of applications that i think you should be using uh, to be eligible for a potential airdrop later if i forgot some depths please let me know down in the comments thank you for watching please drop a like subscribe to the channel and i'll see you next time